Hi, Gary Zacharias here. We'll be doing a series of videos uh, to let you get comfortable with what's going on in our class. And I thought I would start, this will be our first video, I thought I'd look at the research paper if you turn to page 94 in the textbook. That's where it's discussed and uh, I know you can read it, but I just want to give you some highlights. This is a little different research. Uh, a lot of people are used to going out and finding information and dumping it into a paper and turning it in saying, there you go. And um, I used to do research that way. And I realized I was bored reading those papers and the students were bored doing those papers because they didn't get a chance to express themselves at all. So I came across something called an iSearch paper, iSearch, letter I, which means you are going to be involved in the paper. You'll, you'll actually be in the paper as well as the information. So that's what makes it a little bit different. You're allowed to be in this. It's going to be a story as well as your search for information. So it's got five parts and I've got a bunch of these uh, samples that you can look at on Canvas. Just go to research area and take a look. I've got, uh, I don't know, maybe nine or ten papers that students have turned in in the past. So that should help you just to see what they look like. But basically, you find something you're interested in. Something you think you can get enough information on. But be careful. I've had some students try to take a big bite out of something that's way too big and it just overwhelms them after a while. I'll give you an example. I had somebody doing uh, Dwight Eisenhower, President of the United States back in the 50s. And I said, that's too big a topic. So he, because I said, you'll find books and books and books and you're going to have to read just tons of material. And it's going to be bigger than what it needs to be. It's going to be a book itself. So narrow it. So he ended up finally narrowing it down to one episode that happened to Eisenhower while he was president. It was about a one week or two week period of time. I said, great. Now when you find those big books out there that are on Eisenhower, you can just read the section about that item that you wanted to talk about. You don't have to read about his life, his uh, marriage, his war experiences, all that kind of stuff. Just focus on that one item. So make sure your topic, whatever you're picking, make sure there is information on it, but not a, a room full of information. You don't want to do an entire life of somebody. You don't want to do a history of a nation. You might not even want to do one battle if it's a huge battle. So narrow it down. You pick what you like. I've had people do things about careers. I've had uh, papers on historical ideas, uh, quantum computing, uh, animals, um, diseases that run in their family. So it's up to you. You pick something that you don't mind doing a little work with. And it's going to have five sections. First is why did you pick the topic? Second is what did you know before you started? Third is the actual searching for the information. I want you to read that part very carefully and look at what it says uh, in some of the sample papers because you're not just finding the information. You're going to tell me how you found it. Then you're going to tell me the information and then you're going to evaluate that source. Now you do that for every one of your 10 sources. You need 10 sources for this paper. So you have to do that all three things for each source. Does that make sense? How'd you find it? Uh, what what was in there, what was the information, and then you evaluate it as good or bad or questionable or whatever. Okay, so that's uh, really important to know. Um, I said as the semester goes on, there are going to be some updates. So it's not just here, go write a paper, but I will give you updates along the way where you'll have to do a bit, a piece, a little, a little, a little, and all of a sudden you've got a lot. You've got your paper ready to go. So uh, don't feel like this is overwhelming you. And be sure to check with me as you're working on this in case you have any questions. So that's the research paper. Please look them up as far as some of those samples so you get a feel for it, so you can get the structure of it down. Hi again, let's talk research again. Um, this is something that's going to be an ongoing process throughout the semester. You've got five major essays to do, but at the same time you're working bit by bit by bit on producing a good research paper. So. I just want to make sure you, you understood things like these updates that are going to be uh, happening here. So just a reminder, you have five sections to the paper. The, the big picture is you got five parts of the paper, uh, why you picked a topic, what you knew before you started, and then the research itself. And then four is uh, a summary of what you said, and then five is what's ahead for you. Okay, so that's, that's on page 94. Um, down near the bottom it says, 
there are going to be some required updates uh, for you to submit. And I say if you do them faithfully, if you keep on with these updates, you'll be fine. Uh, the paper as will assemble itself, basically. So it's really important that you do that. So let's do this. Let's go over to page 97. And I wanted to talk about these updates and how each one gets a little more uh, involved because you're beginning to find more and more information. So here we go, page 97. You've got eight of those uh, updates there. Number one was just what's your topic? What are you thinking about doing? I said, be specific. And we talked about that the other day. Make sure you don't take on something too big. So you want something very focused. I'll try to help you if I think it's going to eat you alive by being too big. So you want something that's uh, focused. Where do you plan to get your information? Please keep in mind, one of the ways I grade this paper is how varied your information is. In other words, I don't want 10 times to see that you just Googled. Uh, there are a lot of other ways to get information. I'm asking you to find one academic journal, and you can do that through the Palomar College Library. I hope you can go online. I hope you can do an interview or two. So I'm looking for uh, books, magazines. I'm looking for a wide range of material that you're able to gather. So it says, uh, where do you plan to get your information? Anticipate problems. You'll, you'll run into problems. You'll run into dead ends or you'll run into something that will frustrate you. But that's part of good research is how do you get around these problems. So that was your first update. And then number two, I'm asking you to, to gather, to start getting your sources. I said find three sources. They might be a person. It might be uh, in the library. It might be a book, whatever it is. <clears throat> and tell me what they are. So that's research update number two. Remember these occur different times during the semester. Don't do them all at once. And then number three is uh, for your first source. So now I'm assuming you've actually found a source. Turn in a summary or a paraphrase of the information you found. I said it should be at least a typed page. Okay, so we're talking about quite a bit of information. So this is your first source. So it says summarize or paraphrase. Remember we talked about the difference between those two things. A summary is basically taking, let's say it's a 10-page article. It's taking those 10 pages and collapsing them down to, let's say, around a page. Okay, that's, that's summarizing. It's taking a lot of information and shortening it. Paraphrase means you found a paragraph or two or three that are so good. You don't want to leave anything out and you just rewrite it in your own words. Don't just put the original paragraph that you found and make that your research paper and just put quotation marks around it. Do you see the problem with that? If you're quoting big chunks of your research, it doesn't look like you're doing any thinking. You're just grabbing pieces of a book, pieces of a magazine, pieces of a website, and slapping it together and saying, here's my research paper. That's not good research. You're supposed to be thinking. I want critical thinking skills to show up here. So if you find something that's good and you want to use a lot of it, you've got to translate it into how you think and how you would write. Otherwise, be careful because you can get into problems with plagiarism. We'll be talking about that a little bit later in the semester, but uh, plagiarism is where you don't quote it. What you do is you change a word here and you change a word there and call that a uh, paraphrase. That's not a paraphrase. You're still stealing the author's style, so be really careful. So make sure you change it into your own style of writing. So that's your first source. Then look at uh, update number four for your second source. Summarize or paraphrase the information and notice what's added this time, add an evaluation. So remember, for every one of your 10 sources, when you get ready to turn the paper in, every source has to have how you found it, the information that you found, and an evaluation of it. So now I'm asking for the first time in update number four to put an evaluation in there to show me that you can evaluate. If you've got questions about what would you do? How do you evaluate those kinds of things? Um, I've got some information uh, for you here, if I can find the page number. Um, okay, it's on 104 and 105. So look at 104 and 105, especially 105, because it talks about evaluating, uh, especially online sources. So I am asking you to go ahead and evaluate for the first time. So that's research update number four. Number five, do you see what I'm doing? I'm just saying, Keep going, get some more sources together. So it says for your third and your fourth source. So now, as the semester moves along, you should be gathering more information. Number six says do it for your fifth and your sixth sources. 
number seven, uh, we'll worry about that later on, uh, and number eight, doing the outline. So we'll do those things later. But I hope that makes sense as far as doing these research updates. If you stay on it, and I know it's going to be tempting to just kind of put it aside, but if you'll keep up with every one of those updates, you're, bu you're basically building your paper a piece at a time, the research paper. So that way when it's finally due, it's not overwhelming. You've already got the pieces of it. So the main thing is go take a look. I've got some samples on Canvas. Take a look at some of my sample research papers. And uh, these are from different students, different semesters. And you'll see the structure. You'll see how they told, how they found the source. They'll, you'll see their information. You'll see where they evaluated it. You'll see their summary at the end. Uh, you'll see things like works cited, which we'll talk about another time. So I'm just trying to use this as a way to, to really encourage you to march down throughout the semester as you put piece by piece together for this research paper. But feel free, email me anytime you have a question about it. Okay, thank you. It's time to take another look at the research paper, uh, maybe the big picture, but more than that, I want you to see the guidelines, the, the things I'm looking for that make for a really good research paper. So the information starts on page 94, and I'm not sure I'm gonna go over much of that because this is a material I'm sure you've already looked at. And uh, please go take a look on Canvas under the modules, research paper modules. I've got nine or 10 research papers for you to take a look at to get the feel for the structure of the paper itself. Remember, it's got five parts. Why are you doing it? What'd you know before you started? Then the heart of it is going source by source by source. You have to have at least 10 sources. Make sure you have an academic journal in there somewhere, something with page numbers that you can show me. You can use parenthetical references. And then the fourth section is a summary, should be at least a page long. And uh, that's where you take all that information that you had in your research and you put it in some kind of logical order and you just boil down everything and give us the, the heart of your paper. And then the last section is what's ahead for you. So those are the five sections of the paper. So I don't think I will spend any more time on 94. If you look at 95 at the top of the page, <clears throat> this is a, a quick overview of the structure of the thing. So can you see my Roman numerals off to the far left there? One, two, three, four, five. Those are those five areas we talked about. So there's Roman numeral one, top of the page, why you picked the topic, what you knew before starting. And then look at A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's where you start going through source A, information, evaluation, all that kind of stuff. Come down to Roman numeral four. That's the one that looks like an I and a V. Summarize your information. And then the V is five, what's ahead for you when you're done. Now, after that, I'm trying to give you just a rough idea of how much space to devote to each of these sections. So I said for numbers one and two, that's going to be extremely short, just a few sentences each. So it may be somewhere around five to 10% of your paper. So if you're spending way too much time on this, you might want to cut back some. How about number three, section three? That's the story of your search. That's going to be fairly short. Don't spend a lot of time on the story unless you have something really interesting to tell. I have had some really interesting stories that people have uh, shared in their paper, but uh, for the most part, it's going to be a, just a few sentences. And then look where it says Roman numeral three, B and E, that's referring back up. That's the information you got. That's the heart of the paper. That's the whole point of doing research is come up with information. So I said somewhere between 50 to 70% of your paper is going to be the information. That's why it is a research paper. And then Evaluate your sources. That's going to be another 10, maybe 15% of the paper. Remember, that's where you take a look at the source and say, I trusted the author. It was organized well. It gave me other places I could go to for information. Or it was too hard to read. Uh, I couldn't figure out the organization. I didn't really trust. I didn't know anything about the author. There was no information given there. So that's a kind of evaluation that you're going to do. And then Roman numeral four at the bottom there, maybe 10 to 15% is your actual summary. That's at least a page long. And then finally, uh, Roman numeral five, maybe one to 5%, just what's ahead. It might be just a couple of sentences, no more than that. All right, bottom of the page, still on page 95, very bottom of the page, I have a checklist and warnings. This is where it can go very, very wrong. So be careful on this. A, potential trouble spots, one, Pretty simple, not enough information. Let me give you an example. 
You say you found a book. So I'm expecting at least a real solid chapter out of the book or a solid several pages that you're using out of the book or maybe the whole book. And instead, I get a short paragraph that just says, this book told me uh, what it was like for this person to grow up. Wait a minute. Where's all the information about what it was like for that person to grow up? So don't skim over the information. If it's good, solid information, you've got to spend time developing it and explaining it to us. So maybe not enough information. Number two, at the very bottom of the page, incorrect organization. What, what organization? The organization at the top of page 95. You had one, that's uh, why you're doing it. You had two, which is what you knew before you started. You had number three, which is where you went source by source. How'd you find it? What was the information? Evaluate it. Go to the next source. How'd you find it? What's the information? Evaluate it. So that's the, the structure. And then you have number four, which is summary. And then you have number five, what's ahead for you. So once in a while, people have gotten lost and they don't have that uh, kind of organization. Flip over to page 96. Number three, vague evaluations. I'm going to spend some more time on the evaluations, uh, having you turn them in, having me uh, give you some feedback. But please, for the evaluations, you want specifics. Don't just say, I trusted this source. And don't just say, it was organized well. Don't just say, it had some interesting charts. Don't just say, it gave me some other places to go. Be specific. What were the charts like? How do you know it was organized well? If you say you trusted the source, why? Who's the person that wrote it? So be specific in your evaluation. This is crucial. Uh, number four, watch out for plagiarism. Especially, remember what we talked about, plagiarism is where you put a lot of information into your paper from another source, and even if you give credit that you took it from another source, if you're using the author's style and words and same sentence structure without quoting it, if you're, if you're pretending that that's the way you wrote it, you didn't write it that way. You're actually stealing the author's structure and vocabulary and the way of writing. So use quotation marks if you have to. Most of the time, I want you to be able to take the source and think about it and write it down in your own style. So be careful, otherwise you, you'll end up with plagiarism. Number five, the summary was either way too short or it wasn't organized very well. So maybe you're going to organize it by time or if it's a disease, you might organize it by how do you get it, what does it do to you, and what's ahead as far as uh, trying to cure it. So I don't know, something like that. Uh, then number six, you've got to get the forms of research down well. Like what? Parenthetical references. Remember, every time you have something that has page numbers, you're going to use parenthetical references. We already covered that. Quotations. You handled the quotations well. You knew what to do if you had too long a quotation. You knew that you could use just a part of a sentence rather than an entire sentence. That would be effective. And your work cited. That's the very last page of your paper where you list all of the sources. And they have to be in a very specific format. So you can look up MLA, go online, type in MLA, work cited for research, and you'll find the exact way to do it. If you go to tamu.ed, that's Texas A&M University, they have a great writing center and they'll give you a lot of information. If you go to OWL, O-W-L, <coughs> excuse me, that's put out by Purdue University. It means online writing lab from Purdue. Good places to go to for a lot of help, not just for your research paper. All right, then look at letter B on page 96. These are the guidelines. These are the things I'm going to be looking for. A, good search strategy. What I don't want to see is I Googled, I Googled, I Googled, and that's what I see for 10 of your sources. That's not a search strategy. That's just a, an easy way to try to put a paper together. So I'm hoping your strategy included talking to a librarian, talking to somebody on campus, setting up an interview, sending off for some information uh, using a website, um, uh, a YouTube video, uh, certainly academic journals. So show me that you can find a lot of different sources there. Number two, you found sufficient information. You've got a lot of good information. Number three, you have really good evaluations. Number four, you have a summary that's really quality. Five, you did well in your work site and the parenthetical references as far as how to do it, um, as far as the form goes. Number six, the quotation. A blend means you use part of a sentence that, that was you and a part of the sentence is the quotation itself. 
You, you didn't put a lot of long quotations in there, more than four lines, but if you did, you know how to do that correctly. Number seven, don't, don't lose track. Don't let the grammar fall apart. You still have to have good sentences, complete sentences, and things like that. Um, all right, so I'm whipping through this kind of quickly. I hope that's all right. Uh, make sure you email me if you have any issues or any questions at all, because this paper counts a lot counts twice as much as any other paper that you write in the class. So if you have a big problem, first of all, it, it hurts a great because you lose a lot of points. But more than that, if this is the paper you decide to rewrite, it's hard to rewrite a research paper. It kind of eats you up. I mean, what if you only had four sources and I give it back to you and it doesn't have a good grade? Now, we're toward the end of the semester, you have to go hustle more sources or you know, it's something big that's wrong with the paper. It's tough to get it fixed up in time. So try to do as great a job as you can on this. Um, so please email me with any questions or concerns that you have. All right, thanks.